Hello and welcome everyone to this first podcast on cancer. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the basic characteristics of cancer. We're going to talk about how a cell progresses from being a healthy cell to a cell that starts to accumulate some mutations and begins to grow out of control and is then a benign cell, a benign tumor, I should say, and then eventually that benign tumor becomes more invasive and ultimately metastasizes and spreads to other tissues. I want to begin this conversation here with this short video. And this is a video taken of human cells. And the first part of the video will be human cells that are, are healthy. And the second one will be cells taken from breast cancer. You'll notice that as you watch this video, the cells are growing at the same time rate. And you'll notice as we move into the cancer cells how much faster they grow. They ha the video hasn't been sped up at that time. This is just how fast cancer grows. So let's start watching this. You'll see these cells here. They start to divide. You'll notice that they form a nice regular pattern. This is characteristic of healthy cells. These particular cells um, are from the lumen of the mammary glands so that they will eventually form a sort of tubule that will be important for um, to forming those ducts. And they're going to show a little cartoon here of this. And this is just what they look like in, in the diagram. And this is how they should form, a nice regular pattern of cells. And now we're going to look at the breast cancer cells. And you'll see that they're growing much faster. And I'm going to stop it for a second. And you see how they're no longer forming these nice, regular shaped cells. Rather, they're forming these really, really large clumps of cells that aren't forming any predictable structure here. And they keep growing until they form this large mass. And this is what might be felt at some point as a lump in the tissue. They're going to show this again just to get a better view of it. And you can see how fast they grow and how they completely grow out of control and don't have um, that end result of a nice regular pattern of cells. Now I want to begin to talk about some of the characteristics of cancers. Cancer in itself is a very diverse disease. There are over a hundred different kinds of cancer and each one presents itself a little differently. And that presents a problem, right? Because like a lot of diseases, that are caused by single gene mutations and all that type of disease follows a similar pattern, they're easier to treat or potentially cure. That's one of the problems we have with cancer and that is that there are so many different kinds of it, it makes it very difficult to treat it. Because it's much like trying to treat or cure a hundred different diseases as opposed to a single disease. However, we can take advantage of some common characteristics known to exist for all or at least most cancers. So I'm going to move to the whiteboard now so we can um, list some of these characteristics. Okay, what we're going to talk about now are some of the common characteristics of cancer. We know that we can have a fairly healthy growing tissue here. I'm just going to draw these to look sort of like epithelial cells. kind of long and cylinder-shaped cylinder cells. Now what happens is that one of these cells will gain a mutation. And I'm just going to signify this as orange in here. I'm going to shade it in orange. Now as you look at this cell, the single cell that gains a mutation, it doesn't really at this point look any different than the other cells, but it begins with a mutation in a single cell. So I'm going to write that over here. Now, as I said, this mutation doesn't look make, make this cell look any different, but it starts off still as this single cell with a single mutation. And it kind of sets the stage for the cancer to start to progress. At this point, we're just looking at a single cell though. However, that first mutation, or at least one of the early mutations, so let's write early mutation. is in a cell cycle gene, meaning a gene that regulates the cell cycle. 
Because of that, this single mutation here in this single cell will allow the cell to grow faster. And it grows faster in relation to its neighboring cells that it once was like. And because of that, it's going to start to gain more mutations. I'm going to quickly draw the cell cycle down here. I'm only going to keep it here for a moment because we're going to need the space to write. And I want to just remind you so we don't forget what we're talking about. So remember during this stage here, it's highly regulated to make sure that the cell divides at the right time and that mutations don't accumulate. But if you're growing faster, you're losing some of that regulation. And we're going to talk about that in, in a lot more detail uh, later on. And as it's doing that, it's going to start to gain mutations. Now what happens is, because of the things we just wrote about, that it's growing faster, it's gaining more mutations. Let's draw some of our epithelial cells here again. And now we're going to draw our, our new mutant cells here. And you'll know, notice a few things here about them. One is that I have them growing a little faster. I'm going to draw a few epithelial cells here too, just to show that they're still around even here. But these two are, these mutated cells here are growing faster now. Not only are they growing faster, but they begin to look a little different now. So let's erase this here. We'll come back to that. They're looking different now. They're also losing some of their ability to function as these original epithelial cells. In fact, at this point, they might not function even remotely like an epithelial cell. Because they're growing faster, they're stealing the nutrients, or at least much of the nutrients, from the healthy cells. The healthy cells are having a harder time keeping up with these rapidly growing tumor cells. As this continues, the cells are continuing to grow faster, continuing to accept more mutations, and at some point, they're going to be able to evade our immune system. Under healthy situations, this cell might have been able to divide a couple times, but our immune system should have been able to go after it and remove it. But for whatever reason, perhaps because it gained a certain mutation, it's been able to evade the immune system and now continue to grow. Now, at some point, what happens is these tumor cells that are growing, they'll begin to invade a neighboring tissues. I'm going to write the word invasive because that's the characteristic we use for cancer cells. They, they are invasive cells. And so you may have a different set of cells, and I'm just going to draw them a different color and, and a different shape here. I'm going to draw them here, this neighboring tissue here, in a, in a different color and a different shape just to let you know that they are a different cell type and a different tissue. And these cells that are starting to grow out of control here now will begin to evade this tissue. Again, at this point, what we're looking at is this fairly large mass of cells that have taken over this, these tissues here and these as well. At this point, particularly early on when it's just in these epithelial cells, we call this a benign tumor. Technically, at this point, we wouldn't even call it a cancer yet because it hasn't started to spread. It's still in this localized region here. Now, cancers do something very clever, and they will start to recruit a blood vessel towards it. So this is my blood vessel here, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's carrying along red blood cells, white blood cells, down a certain path here, just like it always does these rapidly growing cancer cells now will begin to release certain chemicals that signal the blood vessels to start growing towards the tumor cells. And eventually these blood vessels will invade these tissues like so. And we call this phenomena I'm going to write it down here, angiogenesis. 
This is just the process of growing blood vessels. Now this is a normal process usually. We use this to repair our tissues when they're injured. We, it's, it's used um, during embryonic development to set up the circulatory system. But this is a situation that is not healthy. We, we have now sort of provided an escape route for these cancer cells. These cancer cells can now invade into this blood vessel, right? Because now they're, they have this ability to be invasive, and now they can enter this blood vessel. And now they enter into the circulatory system. Now in the circulatory system, we would like to hope that they would be destroyed by white blood cells, but at this point, um, many of them can evade the, the, the um, immune system. And now once they're here in this blood vessel here, they can begin to invade tissues far away from the initial primary tumor. In fact, we should call that what this is. This here is our primary tumor. This is where the cancer started. It's going to leave now, through, because of angiogenesis, the cancer cells enter into the blood vessels and leave. And now they can go to other parts of the body and set up a secondary tumor. And I'm going to need to erase these, uh, this list over here. And let's go ahead and have this blood vessel shoot up here. And we'll make a, a new tissue here that's surrounding it. Maybe this is the liver. And maybe over here was lung tissue, for instance. Our tumor cells can now end up here and now begin to invade the liver tissue. They're still going to have that, those mutations, so they're still going to start to out compete and grow faster than the liver cells and set up a, a new tumor site. So again, we call this our secondary tumor. Our secondary tumor. And we can end here, well almost end here, a few more things to say. I'm going to erase what's over here on the right side because I need a little room to write. And I want to list a few other characteristics as we take this in here. All these mutations that had occurred from this primary site here, the very first mutation, all the way till its ability to evade the immune system, grow, recruit the, the blood vessels, metastasize, and start growing into new tissue, requires lots of mutations. At least 10, but probably more than 10 mutations. Mutations in their, their, by them very selves are rare. And, and so for them to accumulate in this manner, typically, not always unfortunately, but typically, this is a disease of old age. Now, we all know people who've gotten cancer at a very young age, so this, of course, is not a, um, always the case. Now, we can speed this up some, not that we want to, of course, but this is just a simple fact, that sometimes this progression can be sped up some. And it can be sped up some because of the ability to inherit a predisposition. Cancer by itself is not an inheritable disease in the sense that you're not going to inherit one mutation and all of a sudden you're going to have cancer. And, and that's sh shown to be true by the fact that only about 5 to 10 percent of cancers have a heredity link. Now, of the, the people who inherit one of the, these mutations, they have a greatly increased chance of uh, getting cancer. But still, if you look at everybody with cancer, only less than 10% of them have inherited a mutation. So what that is telling is that not only is there a genetic component to cancer, all these genes that have to be mutated, every now and then something can be inherited, but with only that accounting for 5 to 10%, we know that there has to be a large environmental component to help stimulate some of these mutations. And these environmental components, we're going to call them carcinogens. These are various chemicals. They could be ionizing radiations. There's something that comes into the system, the living system, from the outside world and induce mutations. And these mutations then can lead to cancer. So we call them carcinogens. Special mutagens that are linked to cancer. For instance, UV light, smoking, 
Okay, well, that ends this podcast. And in this podcast, we talked about some of the basic characteristics of cancers. These characteristics are found in many cancers, if not most cancers. And we took this single cell here, it gained a single mutation, and we took it from that, that single initially healthy cell as it began to evade the immune system, overcrowd the healthy cells, invade other tissues, and eventually metastasize to other parts of the cells, of the, of the organism, and invade new tissues. In the next podcast, we're going to focus on the cell cycle and how specific genes regulate the cell cycle and how when they are mutated, they allow that cell cycle to go out of control. And that is really that initial step that's going to lead to these cancers. All right, well, if you have any questions, please make sure you come see me. If not, I'll see you in class. Bye.